Hello and welcome to Bishop Lloyd's Palace. This has been the home of Chester Civic Trust since 1995 and we're very lucky to have such um, an impressive grade one listed building as our headquarters. So what do we have here? We've, we've actually got two townhouses that have been combined together at some stage. Both townhouses were built in the very early 17th century, around about 1615. And we believe that they were joined together into one property towards the end of the 17th century, but we've got no precise date for, that, uh, for, for those alterations. So why are these buildings called Bishop Lloyd's Palace? Well, George Lloyd was Bishop of Sodor and Man from 1599 to 1605. He was then appointed Bishop of Chester and served in that capacity from 1605 to 1615. And this was his townhouse, or at least this, the, the western half of the building was George Lloyd's townhouse. He also had property in North Wales. And the date 1615, which is the year when George Lloyd died, is carved into the gable frontage of the western half of the property. But we don't know if that date represents the date of construction. And if it does, then it seems odd that the building was only just being finished when he died in 1615. So that puzzle, that remains a puzzle to this day. And it's interesting that if, if his association with the building was so short, that 400 years later, the property is still called Bishop Lloyd's Palace. The main features and the main rooms of Bishop Lloyd's Palace are in the level above row level. But when these were townhouses, they were four storeys high. They were built above medieval cellars or undercrofts. And then there are three levels above that. So they got the row level above the, immediately above these cellars. And, and then the main entertaining rooms and living rooms were at one level above the row, which, which is the level that, uh, that the Civic Trust now has. And then there are attic rooms as well, which, which these days are now a private and separate flat. The larger room has a very magnificent fireplace, which, which doesn't belong in the room because it, it, the overmantel is so tall that it, it's required a recess in the plasterwork ceiling. So that fireplace doesn't belong to the building and has been imported from somewhere else. The fireplace in the smaller room may well have started in the larger room and moved when the two buildings were combined together. Again, we've got no precise record of when that might have happened. But both the fireplaces are some of the most important features of the property. The other important features are the plasterwork ceilings, which were magnificent but very different in the two main rooms. The plasterwork design in the larger room is very similar to some plasterwork in Chester Cathedral in St Ansel's Chapel, and that was dated 1623. So it's quite possible that the plasterwork in this larger room was done by the same itinerant plasterers who did the work in the cathedral. The plasterwork in the smaller room is a lot simpler and doesn't have any ecclesiastical motifs. Instead, it has maritime motifs, a ship's wheel, a sea serpent in the frieze, and Tudor roses, not the sort of thing that you would expect a bishop to choose to decorate his own house. So it's possible that the plasterwork in the smaller room was, was commissioned by the owner who bought the property from George Lloyd's widow in 1615. But again, we don't know exactly who that was. Watergate Street, of course, is the, is the main route from the city centre to the old port of Chester. And in the 17th century, it was a very, very busy street with lots of merchants living and trading from the undercrofts and from the row level. 
and in most cases living over the shop. So it's quite possible that that these these houses in the later 16th century, 17th century were used by merchants trading from the port of Chester.